Hello, 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 Facebook fam. It's been a minute. Welcome to Wife Masterclass Live. This is your girl, Gail Crowder, and I just want to tell you guys, hello, 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 hello. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. It is amazing that we have not met in Wife Masterclass since last fall, and so this is Wife Masterclass Spring. And I just want to tell everybody I am super excited about the series that we're going to be going through for the next four weeks. And I will be actually teaching all the Wife Master classes myself this time. And this is a little bit new because normally I don't hold it on Facebook. But during my prayer time, God was like, you know, hold it on Facebook Live and see how things go. Um, I will be taking questions so you can go definitely go ahead and um, ask your questions. I won't read them and answer them until the end of the class. But please go on and invite people. There's an invite button, I'm sure, somewhere where it says, tell people I'm on Wife Masterclass. Hello, Tanya, how are you? And so um, please go in and invite your friends because tonight is going to be an exciting time. Again, this is my first time doing a Wife Masterclass live on Facebook, and I'm super excited. So please just hit the join or invite people. Um, and so it will, you know, so we can have so many people on this class. And I'm just really excited about um, what God is going to do in these next couple of Wife Masterclasses. And so um, again, welcome to Wife Masterclass for the spring. I am Gail Crowder, the One Sexy Wife, and I have the privilege of talking and coaching and helping women all over the world, and, and it's been an, a phenomenal ride. Um, hi, Patrice. How are you? Thank you so much for joining my Facebook Live. Make sure you guys go in and invite other people to, to come to Wife Masterclass, because again, this is my first time doing Wife Masterclass on um on on Facebook normally I do it on a Google Hangout or on a different platform and so I'm trying it the, for the first time live and so um, prayerfully this class is going to go really really well um, I'm used to having a, a question button or whatever but again if you have questions I will definitely scroll through and answer them towards the end of the call and so um a few housekeeping things for you guys that know about the um, 2018 conference. Yes, I'm talking about the 2018 conference because we already have 12 people registered for the 2018 conference called Color Him Red Reloaded Wife Life in 5G. And so it's going to be off the chain. And um, so I want to go ahead and invite you guys to that. Uh, right now I am running a special for 125 and then if you want to do a group of women of six women, um, all you guys can come for $650, which that only makes the registration $108. So you can't beat that. But all of these specials will end in June. So if you're thinking about coming, go ahead and mark your calendars. Go ahead and start registering because, again, God has already showed me that it's going to sell out again. And so um, I get a lot of women at the end of, you know, trying to get in in January and I just can't accommodate you. So please just act early um, because for you, a lot of you ladies that have been on here um, to to the conference, you know, it's an amazing event and women come from all over the world um, to fellowship and we just you know have a phenomenal time and so I'm looking for God to do some amazing things like I said it's just now April and we already have 12 women registered and three of the women are from out of country and so I'm, I'm super excited about that so mark your calendars it's January 26th and 27th of 2018 it's going to come really really quickly so don't delay I am running a special um, for $125 and then for a group of six you can come for $650 which makes it only $108. Both of those specials end 
in June. So I'm, I'm giving you a warning. I will be telling you about this every single week, um, every Thursday for the next three Thursdays, we will be meeting in masterclass. And so I don't want to take up any more time. I just want to tell you guys, thank you so much for joining me. Please share the link in the video so we can get some more people on here. But tonight I really want to talk to you about stop, look and listen. And as a wife, you know, um, it's sometimes very, very difficult to stop, look and listen. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you about a different, a couple of different components when it comes to that, because um, we as wives are juggling so many different things. And I will tell you in my practice, the, some of the biggest things we talk about is intimacy, communication or the lack of communication and, and really being present in the marriage and not losing um the spont spontaneity that we have, at, we used to have in our marriages, and also really being connected to your husband, right? And I know for a fact, after being married, I'll be married 29 years in July, Gil and I have went through some, some stuff, right? And I will tell you that we have been disconnected for a long time, and I didn't even realize that we had, was dis disconnected. And it all came because I didn't stop looking, listen, right? I was too busy going. I was too busy building a career. I was too busy doing other things um, and, and not really investing in my marriage. And so when I was doing my prayer time, when I was coming up for the topics for Wife Masterclass, God just gave me the stop, look, and listen. And so James 1 and 19 says, but let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slower to anger. And I was like, God, well, you know, tell me more about that. And then he, he led me to this. If you notice, God has given us two eyes, two ears, and only one mouth. And the reason why he did that was because he wanted us to stop, look, and listen in every area of our lives. And, and, and sometimes it's so hard to do. It's so hard to stop, look and listen, especially when you're living in a household with a person that you can begin to take for granted. And I know for a fact, I was one of those people who um, began to take my marriage and my husband for granted because I just felt that, you know, Gil and I are on one, we're married, we're on one accord and, 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 you know, life is happening and he understands what is going on in my life. But, but truth be told, there was a storm brewing in my marriage. There was a storm brewing um, with Gil, there was a storm brewing with myself and we were not connected. And, and, and so many things can be avoided in our marriages if we would just stop looking, listen. And so today, um, I'm going to really focus in on that. And the first thing is stop what you're doing and give your husband your undivided attention. And you're like, what? Like, stop. Yeah, stop what you're doing. So many of us are tied up with our girlfriends, with our careers, with, with our children, with uh, our churches, with all of these outside influences, social media, um, all, you know, just all of these things that stimulate us. TV scandal be coming on. So a lot, I know a lot of people are going to be watching that. It's so many outside influences that does that are requiring so much of our attention that we don't take time to stop and reconnect with the only person that we cut a covenant with on this earth, which is our husband's. We don't take the time to stop and say, you know what? You're important to me. Let me stop doing all of these outside things and reconnect with you and see what's going on with you. See how I can service you. See how I can love on you. See how I, 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 can, I can be, you know, the woman that you need me to be. But because we're so focused in on so many different things and we're so tired. I've been that woman. And so I want to just give you some things that you might want to stop doing so often so you can start focusing in a little bit more on your husband. The first thing is stay off of social media so much. And you're like, well, Gail, I'm on social media watching you. Correct. But people think I'm on social media all the time. I'm really not. I'm only on social media most of the time on Monday, Wednesday and Fridays because I know that social media, I need to 
help build my business, but I also know that social media can drain your time. Social media can, can, can take away and distract so many quality times that you can have with your husband and with your family and with, with quality friends, right? So that's the first thing. Get off of social media. Second thing is get off the phone. So many of us spend so much time on our cell phones doing stuff, researching stuff, talking on the phone and stuff like that. Take the time to, to, to have a conversation with your husband. Take the time to have a conversation with your children. Take the time to have a live conversation with people who matter the most. And your husband is the person that you said you want to spend the rest of your life with. So take the time to have a conversation with him, right? And then the next thing is stop looking at so much TV, right? TV consumes, they said, like 85% of our time. 85% of our time is spent on, on watching TV. And and we've gotten so great and the technology have gotten so great that, that you can record it and then go on a binge and just watch all the shows back to back, back to back, the ones that you miss. I've done that, right? But why not spend that? quality time pouring into your husband, having quality conversations, having those kind of kind of conversations that we used to have before we could record shows and before we had cell phones and before we had social media, right? You had to interact with them. And I'm just saying that now is the time to start interacting, start, start engaging more with your spouse because what you're not doing, someone else will do. Right. And a lot of times we can avoid um, pitfalls in our marriages if we would just stop, look and listen. Right. The other thing, other thing that that I, I know and, and I'm guilty of all of these things. So I'm not telling you something that that I haven't experienced. I'm telling you something that I have done. Right. The other thing is putting your kids in front of your spouse. Right. Stop it. You, you, your covenant was not with your children. Your covenant was between God and your husband. And so the, the thing is, it's just to really start making your husband a priority. Well, Gail, he doesn't make me a priority. Well, he might not make you a priority because you haven't made him a priority, right? And so the thing is, it's really to stop what you're doing and spend quality time with your husband. It's the most important thing that you can do because as you mature, as you grow in different stages of your life, you want someone there that, that is, that has your back. You want someone there that you, you decided that you would, you would spend the rest of your life with. Right. And you don't want to be living in a household with a stranger. The next thing is always, always make sure that you stop, and you give God his time, because if you give God his time, then you will make time for your husband. Then you will make time for your children. You will make time for your your friends and family and you will make time for your career. So many of our households are so out of order because we have our careers first and we're, we're trying to make money. And I understand you got you need money. Trust and believe me, I get it. But when you get your household in order and you put it the way God designed it and make your husband a priority, I guarantee you, you will everything you sow, you definitely will reap. OK, the next thing is to take the time to look. Take the time to assess what is going on in your household. What is going on in your marriage? I always tell women, take the time to do a marriage tune up, right? And, and, and because I get a lot of women that come to me to my coaching program or they, they contact me through my website and they want a 911 call, right? And, and when we really get into um, me talking to them and engaging with them and, and coaching with them. I always ask questions like, did this just happen? Well, no, it didn't. I seen it, but I was too busy. Or, um, I, I, I asked the question, but I never waited for the answer or, or, um, I seen the red flag, but you know, I didn't think that it was going to really happen or I didn't think he was going to do that or all of those different things. Right. And it was because you didn't take the time to really look what was going on in your household. You didn't take the time to really assess what was going on around you. And a lot of times um, our, our spouses are speaking to us. Our spouses 
are, 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 are giving us signs and giving us hints and, and they're saying things, but we're, we're not tuned in. We're too tuned in to all the different things that are going on on TV and social media and who said what and who what wore what and who went to what event. All of those different things. We're too, too tuned in to those things and we're not tuned in to our spouses saying, hey, babe, can you cook a little bit more? Hey, babe, you know, um, um, can, can you spend time with me? Hey, babe, you know, is it, can, can you wash my clothes or Hey, babe, can, can we, you know, can we go here or there? Because you're too busy. You're too busy and you're not stopping looking and assessing what you, what is going on in your marriage. And I also tell women the way that you, um, go to the doctor twice a year, I suggest you, you, you sit down with your spouse and, and, and do an assessment of your marriage twice a year, right? And, and, and be prepared. Be prepared. And we're going to talk about listening, but be prepared to listen. But be prepared to ask those hard questions. How am I doing? How am I doing as your wife? What, what, do, what, do, what do you see? How do you see our marriage in the next year? You know, next two years, next five years. How do you see us uh, handling our finances? How do you see us? You know, are, are we communicating well? How can I communicate better? All those different things are so important when it comes to, to a marriage. And, and a lot of times, I, I have to, let me just speak for me. A lot of times when I have those questions and I ask those questions to Gil, I used to get mad at some of the answers. Just get flat out mad because then I went into the game blaming game, but he was just really telling me how he was viewing the marriage. And I'm, I'm sure you guys have talked to your husbands or, or been somewhere and he's made a comment and you're like, what? Wait a minute. You know, wait a minute. Like, where did that come from? And it's because you were not in tune with your husband and he just said something out of left field that you didn't think. That was even going on in his brain. And it's because you haven't taken the time to have those deep conversations. And granted, they're not going to always be the, 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 the conversation that you want to have. They're not going to always be easy conversations. But I always say stop, look, and, and, and listen. So first of all, just make sure that you're listening. You, you ask questions like, you know, babe, how am I, how, how am I registering as a wife? Right? That's a hard, hard question to ask, especially if you know you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And then some of us will say, oh, I know I got it going on, so I don't need to ask that question. Yes, you do. Absolutely. Yes, you do. And, and, and it goes back to, 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 to when, when, when some people are out and somebody's trying to pick you up, and I'm sure you guys have heard this, you know, you're married and you say, yeah, are you happily married? And, and you say, yeah. And, and then in the back of your mind, sometimes you go, well, is my husband as happy as I think we are? Right. I, I'm sure this has happened to other people, but I, I'm just saying, sometimes you go, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to be married. And, and then you start thinking, well, it, would my husband give that same answer if he was asked about by the female, right? The other thing is how, how, how am I doing as a parent? Right. And even if you don't have, you know, kids of your own, sometimes you are parents to nieces and nephews and those kind of things. Right. Because, um, most of the time men want you to be, um, involved with some type of, of, of activity when it comes to children and stuff like that. It's just something that they desire, right? And so if you are a person that is very self-centered and you don't have children and y'all have discussed, y'all don't have children, that's wonderful. But, but, but most of the time you are engaged with some type of child, right? So just ask the question. I always say, ask question. How is our sex life to you? Right? H how am I doing in that area? You know, and wait for the answer because you might think you're putting it down and you're probably not, you know, and, and how can I make it better? Right. All of these questions are questions that you need to look at and, and assess and get true answers. So you will know how to grow as a wife, because I, I it, 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 it saddens me when women come to me and like, I didn't see it coming. And then I start asking questions like, yeah, I seen that. Yes, he said that. Yes, he did that or whatever. Right. And, and, and then and then you're like, well, I could have avoided this if I would have asked the hard questions. And that's what I'm saying. Stop. Look. And now we're going to talk about listening. 
Now, listening skills are very, very hard. And I and I thought and I do this this communication thing um, in in a lot of my um, classes that I do because I thought I was one of the best communicators, and then I really thought I was a great listener, right? And Gil and I failed that test like tremendously. And and, and listening is as truly a skill, and it's something that we as women don't 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 master very well because we're talkers and we, we're doers and we want to make sure that we fix it and all of those kind of things but when you're looking at your marriage and you're doing an assessment and you're 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 asking the questions and you're trying to come up with a better plan to be a better wife see my my, my goal is is that me and Gil don't have a plan b right we've already went through the brink of of being divorced once before Trust and believe me, I, 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 it is not a great feeling. You know, I walked in and he had left. And most of you guys who've been on here know my story. And, but but God stepped in and, and fixed my marriage. So I know what it is to be on the brink of divorce. I get it. But I also know what it is to avoid what led us there. Because I was too busy. I was not 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 tuned in. I was doing my own thing. I was building my own career. I was just, you know, hear me roar. And, and you know, I looked around and in and, and my mouth and, and a couple of other things, my finance, how I handled my, my money, all those things led to him, him walking away, right? But I got a second chance. And so I decided when I got my second chance with my husband that I was going to be the best wife that I possibly could, possibly could be. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. But am I the same person that he left? Absolutely not. Right. And it's because every year I'm striving to be a better person for me, a better mother for my children, a better um, servant to you guys, and definitely a better woman of God, all of those different things. But it had to come from me doing a self checkup first and then really asking Gilbert the hard questions. What do you need from me? He's like, gee, I love when you cook, right? I never was cooking. I, I used to just, you know, I had the money to do takeout, right? Was that healthy for my family? Absolutely not. But that was not my priority. Cooking for my family was not my priority. So I will say 90% of the time, Monday through Thursday, I cook. I cook something, right? And it's because my family enjoys it. And that came from me doing a checkup of myself and asking my husband the hard questions, right? Now, is there times when I'm traveling or I'm sick or something like that? Uh, that I don't cook and they understand. But for the most part, they get a home cooked meal from me because that's something my family said that they enjoyed. But I wouldn't have never known that unless I did the self checkup. Right. And I asked my husband those hard questions. The other thing that I found out is that, you know, being from Texas, I'm a Texas girl. Everybody congregates in my bedroom. Right. And so anybody that came to visit me, I'm like, let's go up to my room and I'll be showing them clothes and shoes. And we be having a whole fashion show and going on. I did not know that that bothered my husband. Right. It's like everybody goes up to our private space. I didn't see it as a private space. I, I see it as entertaining. Right. And so uh, I learned that from doing the, the self check at And that was after what, 23 years of marriage that he finally just said it. Right. Cause I asked him like, what, you know, what am I doing? And that was one of the things that irritated the heck out of him. And so just make sure that you're looking, that you're stopping and you're looking right now. Let's just talk about listening. Okay. Again, that's the skill that I have not mastered, and I'm being honest, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it like every single day because I always have an opinion and I'm always thinking I'm right, right? And and everybody knows that I'm right now this way. And so um, when it comes to to listening, that's a give and take thing. And sometimes it's very hard to listen, especially when you think your husband is not saying stuff that's correct to you. And so I have a hard time when I think that Gil is not saying what I want to hear or I disagree with him. But I still need to listen and let him finish and then state my case, right? And, and that's that's a hard thing sometimes for me, especially for me. And so learn to listen because a lot of times when you close your mouth and you listen, I'm telling you, you can learn so much from people. 
You can learn so much from your husband. You can learn his emotions. You can learn his frustrations if you just sit back and listen. And a lot of times, especially when we're, we're in the heat of the moment and God will tell me to be quiet, that's hard. Because I'm like, uh-uh. Mm-mm, God, I'm, 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 but he about to get it because he's saying something crazy to me, right? But I'm telling you, most of the time, if I just allow God to keep my mouth closed, he will fight my battle for me, right? And, 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 and a lot of times, Gil will come back and he'll say, I'm sorry, or I see your point of view and all those kind of things. Now, do I miss it more than often? Yeah, I do. For the simple fact is, again, I, I, I'm that chick, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm feisty, right? But, but I'm getting better because I'm learning that when I listen to Gil, he has a great opinion and he has a great point of view. Now, is he always right? Absolutely not. And I'm not always right. But learning to listen to your spouse is one of the biggest things that you can do. And I will tell you, I counsel People from all over the world, women and men, and most of the time they say, I just, I, I quit trying to talk to my wife because she wouldn't listen. She always flew off the handle and she always thought she was right. So I just said, what the heck? I don't talk anymore. But then they're talking to another woman because the other woman is listening, right? And I'm not saying that's the case in every situation, but I will tell you more than not, most of the time when men start Listening to other women is because you have talked so much and you have shut them down and they feel they have no way to no no room to talk to you. And so they go find someone else to, that's going to listen. So just take that to heed and just make sure when you're listening that your body language is saying I'm open to receive the information that you're giving me, not whatever and whatever. I, I was good at that, too, like. I would do all kind of gestures and stuff, and then that would make Gil upset, and then we would end up fussing, right? So now I just sit back, I listen, and, and, and if I want to interject, I'll just say, I'm going to let you finish, and then we'll have the conversation. And really good listening skills is back and forth. It's a back and forth thing. It's not a yelling thing. It's not an emotional thing. It's not a waving of the hands. And I always tell women, make sure if you talk with your hands like I do, just when you're listening, you need to sit on your hands to make sure that you're not becoming confrontational, right? That you are really, truly listening in and, 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 and you have gestures to say, yes, I'm listening in. And you should be able to really repeat some of the key points that, were, that came out of the conversation if you're truly listening. But when you are, are trying to multitask, be on the phone, text your girlfriend and listen to your husband, it doesn't work. I tried it. It doesn't work. It causes conflict in the marriage, right? And so as I get ready to um, start Wife's Master Class, I just wanted to really, really get you guys to think about stopping, looking, and listening. Because I will tell you, your marriage is the most important thing that you can be doing on this earth, right? Besides having a relationship with God. Everything else doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Your children are going to be okay. They are. Your job is going to be okay. They are. Just remember, your husband is the only person on this earth that you cut a covenant with that lives and walks and breathes in the flesh. And when you start looking at your marriage like that, you won't always have plan B and plan C and all of these different plans. You, you will really learn to make your husband and your marriage a priority, right? Is it easy? Absolutely not. Is it like 100% all the time? Absolutely not. But I will tell you, you can avoid so many problems and so many roadblocks in your marriage if you would just stop, look, and listen, ladies. And so I want to scroll through because I, I, I don't know if I have any questions, but I would love to um, answer any questions that you have. And if you don't choose to um, do the questions over here, definitely, definitely hit me up on my website at theonesexywife.com. Again, it's theonesexywife.com. Make sure you put the T-H-E in front of one sexy wife or you will go to a site you don't want to go to. 
And um, I do offer a, a, a free 30 minute consultation on my, my um, website. Again, I just want to tell each and every last one of you, thank you so much for joining me on my very first Wife Master Class live on Facebook. I will be back on Thursday, the 20th at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. And I will be talking about the woman, the wife behind the church lady. And that is that class is really going to be how um, it's really kind of based on my life, how I could lift my hands in church and just be a, a, a nut when it came to to being at home. Right. And being a wife, because I wasn't equipped to be a wife and I got married really, really young. And and, and it, it just how we just are fake. And, and we know how to fake it. And so I want to really talk about uh, unmasking that. Again, if you are interested in uh, any of my services, hit me up on my, my website, theonesexywife.com. You can hit me up on any of my social media at Gail Crowder. And again, ladies, think about coming to the conference. It's going to be off the chain phenomenal. I'm just going to tell you, and we're going to sell out again. And so right now I'm running the special, 125 um, and then a group of for six hundred fifty dollars, which is only one hundred eight dollars. You can't go anywhere for that and get the kind of quality uh, you're going to get at the conference. Again, I say I love you guys. Thank you so much.